It was a successful readathon. Like them, that's the la 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 Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I am here with my rib set round eight wrap up video. I read a total of five books for this readathon. The readathon took place from May 1st all the way until May 8th and it was created by Miranda over at Books 101 so I will leave her link down below if you guys want to check her out. So without further ado, let us get started! So the first two books I'm not going to talk that much about because I'm going to have a full review for each of them on my channel on May 16th and they are The Novice and the Inquisition by Taran Matharu and I was given these books as part of a booktube tour. I'll leave the links for that down below. That was created by Grace over at Loving Them Books and basically we get sent these for review and our honest opinions. The books follow a boy named Fletcher who ends up realizing that he is able to summon demons. That's all I'm going to say about the books because I'm going to have a full review up of them. But I gave them both 5 out of 5 stars. I absolutely loved both of them and I would highly recommend them. So if you guys want to see my full thoughts on them, wait until May 16th when my full review is up. But seriously, read these books because so good and can we just take in how beautiful these covers are? That's it. Okay. The third book that I read for the readathon is Zoe Letting Go by Nora Price. I gave this book a 2.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I, I didn't like it as much as I was hoping that I would. I thought I would like it a lot more than I did because it is a mental health book. I was assuming that it was going to be really good. It was not very good. It's about a girl named Zoe who is woken by her mom one night urgently saying that she needs to get her things packed because they need to leave now. Zoe quickly discovers that she is being driven to a recovery center called Twin Birch that is focusing on girls with anorexia. The only thing is, Zoe doesn't think that she needs to be there because she doesn't have anorexia. She is left with the headmistress, a therapist, a counselor, and five stick-thin girls for the next six weeks. Zoe spends most of her time at this recovery center writing in her journal or writing letters to her best friend, Elise, who never seems to be writing her back. As time goes on, Zoe must face her past and realize why she was actually sent to Twin Birch. I only gave this book a 2 out of 5 stars. I thought it was going to be a lot better than it was since it is a mental health book. I usually love them no matter what. But this one just fell super flat for me. I found all the characters to be extremely boring and they were all just kind of the exact same thing with different names. I thought that the main character Zoe was very unrealistic. She was very nonchalant about her whole recovery process and just kind of went with the flow and I feel like any teenager her age wouldn't just go with whatever she was being told. She would have probably at least put up a little bit of a fight, but she was just kind of like, okay, okay whatever you say, like, whatever. The book was extremely predictable. I was able to call the ending within 50 pages of the book, which, as we all know, I hate being able to predict things in books. I like to be surprised, and it was just very obvious how it was going to end. And another major issue I had with the book was that the author used the word retarded a lot as an insult. And like that actually bothered me so much to say. I absolutely hate when people use that word as an insult. I think there are so many other words that you could use and the fact that the author chose that one word, which is like my biggest pet peeve of anybody in the entire world. If you use that word, I, I don't like you. I'm sorry, I don't like that word. It drives me crazy. It's just there's so many other words you can use. So the fact that she used it as an insult so many times, I just got so frustrated with it and I couldn't give it any higher than a 2.5 because I was just so angry the entire time reading it. <sighs> Rant over. I'm sorry. I just cannot deal with it. Use a different word. It's 2016, people. It is 2016. <sighs> the fourth book that I finished for the rib set was Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. This was my first Morgan Matson book and everyone always raves about how amazing she is. So I finally was like, I need to pick up a Morgan Matson book. And I ended up Really enjoying it. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It's about a girl named Emily and her best friend Sloane. And they've planned this amazing summer together and Emily is more than excited to start it. That's when Sloane disappears and the only thing she leaves behind for Emily is a list of 13 items that she must complete. Emily spends her entire summer break crossing the list off in hopes that it will lead her to Sloane eventually. I thought this book was super cute. It was very summery was exactly what I needed after reading the stupid Zoe Letting Go book. Because I just could not handle it. I was so angry after that book. But we all know why. We all know why. I was instantly hooked from the very beginning of this book. I thought it was super cute. 
I loved all the friendships that developed. I thought they were awesome. And I really, 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 really liked how there was no insta-love. The love took such a long time to develop. And we all know I hate insta-love, so the fact that there was none was such a high point of this book. I loved how it mostly focused on friendships. Thank you, Morgan Matson. Thank you so much. I actually found myself laughing out loud at a couple of the scenes in this book, which I don't usually do that often, so I was super excited about that. I thought the skinny dipping scene was the best one in the entire book. I thought it was hilarious. And anytime Collins was involved, you know my boy Collins. I think he's so funny. I love him. He's my favorite character of the whole book. I ended up only giving the book a 4 out of 5 stars instead of the 5 out of 5 stars because I found it so predictable. I was able to call that Emily was going to go from being a spineless coward into this beautiful confident girl which I mean is probably the whole point of the story but it's been done so many times that it just gets old after a while and it's just like okay cool congratulations you're not spineless anymore. Overall it's a super cute story, super enjoyable and it's definitely a good summer read if you want something cute and fluffy. And the final book that I read for Ripsat was The First by PJ Ferguson. I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It's about a man named Alex Balder who is a miserable, angry man. He hates the world and how his life has turned out until he sees this big crime that is obviously not done by someone who is human. He's pulled into the world of the Grigori, and this is a world where angels and vampires exist, and he must decide if he's going to accept his destiny to either kill all the vampires and save mankind or not. Right from the first page, I was instantly hooked. I went into the book completely blind, other than the fact that I knew that vampires were somehow involved and there was a lot of religious twists and turns, so I found it very exciting to see how the book kind of unfolded. Unlike PJ's other book, Daddy, which we all know I'm obsessed with, 5 out of 5 stars, yes, I love it so much, I found that this one started off a lot quicker. I thought that it was going to be like Daddy and start really slow and then have a lot of plot twists thrown in there to make it exciting, but right from the beginning I was just like, wait, what is happening right now? Like, Okay, okay, we're just getting straight into the story, okay? It was so thrilling and exciting and it had me on the edge of my seat the entire time. I was not expecting it to be so fast paced. It kind of slowed down in the middle when you were getting the backstory of the Grigori and all that jazz, but then it would pick up again right away and I just, it was real good guys, it was real good. I'm in no way religious whatsoever and there's actually a warning on the back saying that if you are religious you need to go into this book with an open mind because there are a lot of controversial topics. Since I'm not religious at all, I found the twists and turns of the stories that PJ wrote very interesting because I knew nothing about it. I knew a lot about the Greek mythology because I took a Greek mythology class this year, so that didn't surprise me at all, but I liked the way that he twisted and turned the stories to make them his own, but still kept kind of close to the originals. It was just really interesting and a really cool concept and I'd highly recommend the book. It was very thrilling and very exciting. Alright guys, so that was the five books that I ended up reading for Ribsat. I want to say thank you to Miranda and the rest of the hosts again. It was so much fun. I really, really hope that you do it again because I saw that you guys were saying that it might be the last one. Please don't let it be the last one because it is so much fun. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!